I'm Harold and today what we're going to do is experiment a little bit I, I'd like to make a little hoist from my mill something mounted on the mill stand to pick heavy things up and set them up on the mill table and I've looked at several different ideas what I would really like to do is have something that's uh, electric powered which means uh, I've got to you know either buy the little hoist that runs about uh, $99 on sale or use one of the uh, windshield wiper motors that I've got around here that have really failed to do the, the job on a lot of other things. So what I'm going to do to, today is I'm going to test the windshield wiper motor to see if it can pick up enough weight to actually be used you know as a uh, little hoist. And if it can, well then from there I'll go ahead and, and use it and if I can't, well Probably I'll buy one of those $49 chain hoists from uh, from Harbor Freight and hook that onto my little arm, you know, for lifting things up. I don't see it worth $99 to get to get it powered, <laughs> but who knows? Anyway, that's that's the plan for today. So let's just get on with it. So many projects seem to start right there, cutting off a piece of metal that uh, that'll do the job. But that, uh, that ought to make a nice base for me to make a test for me. You'll see. And yet another piece. Can't have too much metal when you get started on a project. But this is just an experiment to see how much that I can lift with one of those little windshield wiper motors. I'm going to put one of these things up on each side. And they're going to be the, the axles that hold the pulley. And I'm going to put an axle, I mean, they're not that. They're going to be axle supports, whatever. I'm going to put a metal rod between them, and it's going to be uh, the center of the pulley. There's not going to be any real sides on it to guide the whatever I use, wrap around it, wire, whatever. It's just uh, these, these guys are going to keep things on the axle. And it's really going to be crude. It's mainly just to find out if I gear things down how much can I really do this stupid thing fought me all the way to line it up there every time I turn my tighten my clamp the, the, the metal would move around like that but possibly possibly I've got it right now where I can do something with it Let's see if I can move some of this stuff around That's about right. Having sharp drill bits is really great. And I'll put a bolt in that hole to make it stay steady for the for the next hole I'm going to drill. Now I'm going to make an axle to go in there that will be the center of the pulley and the axle and you know the whole works. Drill a hole in it to put the cable through, and we'll be back. Okay, so what's going on here is I'm going to put a set screw in there. Or I may drill right down into the shaft. I don't know one or the other. But the way I lined up so I can be in the middle is I took this center finder. I put it on there and I ran this uh, little ruler all the way down to the table there so it would be straight up and down. That way, you know, I could have found the center over here and if I start drilling in, it's going to miss the center altogether. You know? So... Now I'll drill in with the, the right size tap drill and I'm going to drill bigger than the uh, set screw down about that deep. I'll follow with a larger drill because I don't have to thread that thing all the way through. I've got a little set screw that's about three-eighths of an inch long so it's not going to need that much you know thread. Alright so I set the collar here for 
just about an inch and a half, which uh, not an inch and a half into the metal, but from the uh, end of the drill bit to where I stopped drilling was about an inch and a half. It's an inch from here to there, and then I drilled a half inch down into there. And now it's time to tap the little booger out and move on to another step. This tap doesn't have a hole in the head, and it doesn't have a cone head on it. Out of these little tap handles, there's one with a hole that I could use for a guide. The others, no. This is Sears, and this is Sears, Craftsman. Got them a long time ago, so I can... I can use the little spring loaded job to guide this one in. I'm going to have to drill holes in the others. I always said I'm going to do that, and then I never do it, so. Even with all the precautions and preparations, I was just about a sixteenth or less off of the uh, dead center. About the width of one tap boot off of dead center going down. But it still holds, and... Uh, it's just for testing anyway. I'm not keeping it forever. But, you know how they say about the best laid plans. Alright, so here we are. We're all ready to go. We've got uh, nothing in the bucket right now, but we've got a cable there. We've got power supply and a controller that will change the speed and the direction. So, really the first thing to do is just see if this thing will move at all, you know. So let's back that off and let's see what happens. Okay. I need more, uh, more tension on there I guess looks to me like that I need to rearrange how the cables holding on to it but the motor just got one bolt holding it and it's it's flipping up like that so I need to go and fix that and then come back there I fastened down the back of the motor so it doesn't lift up and uh, I think this may be the right direction to turn it for going up because the little pulley on the motor is just screwed on Alright, so it lifted that up. Now I'll go and I'll get some uh, lead weights and weigh them and, and we'll see uh, how much it can pick up. Alright, let's put a lead muffin on there and see about what it weighs. That's 1.9 ounces. I'm sorry, 1 pound 9 ounces. I'll get it right. One pound seven ounces. One pound six ounces. One pound nine ounces. One pound four ounces. One pound seven ounces. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to say they're like a pound and a quarter a piece, and we'll load up the bucket and see what happens. The eight muffins ought to be about 10 pounds. I don't know how much that is, metric. Just uh, calculate it if it's important to you. Let's see what happens now. Okay, I guess it's time for another eight weights. All right, 
handheld second. Now there's eight weights in um, extra in there. There's 16 weights, so we're guessing 20 pounds, maybe. Up we go. Okay, that works. We're going to have to add another 10 pounds. I'm not hanging exactly off the edge like I should be, but close. All right, hang on. I will get more weight. Okay, now this will make it 40 pounds. Whoa! Something gave way. The pulley came off. Apparently that's the unscrewing direction for the pulley. Had this bolt in there to try to keep it from unscrewing. But the little bugger has come off. So let me get back around here. I'm starting to think though that there won't be any any really useful thing that I can do with uh, with a windshield wiper motor. I, I just think that because of you know what we just saw there. Let's see if I don't have to undo the clamp. Well, I have to undo the clamp. I'll be back. Okay, the way I was lifting was going in the unscrewing direction for the thing, so I gotta remember to lift going the other way. Anyway, I've got 40 pounds and we're still gonna try to lift it. That's another one. It's got to be above 60 pounds. Another must be 70 pounds there. All right, that's what I want to pick up. And that doesn't seem to be as heavy as that bucket of lead. So the lead may be more than 70 pounds. It may be in the neighborhood of 80 or more, um, which is okay. But this rotary table, as I remember, had a shipping weight of 65 pounds, and I've got about another 5 pounds of accessories in there, so it ought to be close to 70 pounds for sure. Let's see if it'll, if it'll pick it up. There you are. It'll pick it up. So, initially, the little crane I built is going to run that motor and that pulley, and we'll see how it works out. Of course, on the real thing, I'll have to. One of the good things about uh, getting, you know, ahead on your videos where you've got two or three weeks before they're actually released 
is that you can think about what you did wrong and go back and change it. And I get to think, well, if I had not given a conclusive uh, number to that, I told you we'll see how much that that little motor can lift. And when it lifted more than what I needed it to lift, I stopped. Well, I figured the easiest, simplest way is to go back and put a, a bunch of weight in the bucket and if it can't lift it, then we'll t take it out until it w will lift it, and we'll know the limit, you know. And I thought, well, I've got to know exactly how much weight I've got. Well, here's a, a scale. I'd got to try and scheme some way to get the boss lady's bathroom scale, but I, I knew that wasn't going to fly. So uh, it dawned on me that I had bought this little scale some time back, to, to measure how much force I needed to turn the handle on the mill. So here we are. That's just about a little bit above 10 pounds, but the little plastic bucket weighs just a little bit of, you know, I say that's even 10 pounds. And that's two, four, six, seven. Unless I'm counting wrong, that's seven lead weights. So I was counting eight lead weights every time before. So this time I'm going to fill this bucket up until I think that I can't lift it and I'll try it and we'll know exactly how much weight we've got this time and we'll know how much that that thing can lift and how much it can't by, you know, using this approach. So I'll be back once I've got it loaded up with weights. I would have used that bucket for weighing but it weighs two pounds itself and this is just an 11 pound scale. That's 110 pounds. I don't know how much more I've got. I've got some rectangular bars left over. Uh, maybe another 30, 40 pounds. We're going to try to lift this one up. I'm glad I kept thinking about it because, you know, without finding out how much it won't lift, how are we going to know? All right, let's go. Whoa, whoa. I forgot to tie down the back of the motor. Hold on. All right, let's try it again. I was just about to tear it down, so that's why the back of the motor wasn't properly secured. I guess you can tell it's lifting that 110 pounds. And, uh, <coughs> My little directional switch over there is getting kind of warm. I think I think the thing can't uh, the switch can't handle the, the power. I don't think it's the uh, you know the windshield wiper motor. So we're going to let that down, and I'm going to put some more weight in it. I didn't think it could do 110. out the little switch. Oh well, here we go. 120 pounds. And you can see it lifted it. I'm going to let it back down. I'm running out of lead weights. I've got three, uh, three of these bars weighs about ten and a half pounds. So I got a few more of these. All right, 130. Let's see if we, if we can get it up off the floor. You'll have to admit that's up off the floor. <laughs> that handle's not liking it too much. All right, we're going to add another 10 pounds. 140. The belt started slipping, so I 
may be at the limit of what I can mess with. I'll be back. All right, I removed one weight. I think when the belt slips, that's not necessarily the limits of the motor, but it's certainly the limits of, of the, the grip that the toothed belt has on the pulley. Now, we're going to have to say 130 pounds, because I don't, there's no point in me eating up that belt or the pulley. So let's just uh, agree that 130 pounds with the possibility of more of the better, better pulleys or running metal to metal gears or something like that. That's way in excess of what I need. So I think that's pretty good. I hope this gets a thumbs up from a couple of you guys. <laughs> well, now I got to go and delete the video from YouTube and upload an, a new replacement for it. So, there you go. See you later. Look at the condition of that handle in the bucket. I don't think it could have handled much more weight either. Both of the uh, little holes are elongated like that from the strain. And the bucket, he's oval, but I think, I think he might start straightening out after a while. I don't know. All right, enough of that make a little change. As it is, that small pulley is just screwed onto the end of the shaft there and I run that little uh, bolt down there to hopefully just sort of put some tension on it so it didn't want to unscrew. Of course, I'm going down on the unscrewing direction and up on the tightening direction so it's doing that part of it okay now. So let's uh, let's let it down and I'll measure the pulleys for you just so you can know how big they are, what the ratio is. I'm not sure Mickey Mouse would own this setup, but I guess I'm still going to describe it as kind of a Mickey Mouse setup. But it, that burn it. it was just for testing, and it took long enough just putting it together like that, you know? So, nevertheless, let's see how big everything is. We got this guy here and we can give you the measurements in inches and millimeters and everything else all at the same time here. All right, that's 0 .615. 0 .615 about there and that, in, that goes over to about 15.4 millimeters. All right, this side here. That looks like eight millimeters, which is 3.168 inches. So you can figure up that ratio. And then, because my little axle here, this little axle right here, he's smaller again, which will have added to the gear ratio. He's five eighths. And let's see how big five eighths is in millimeters. It's uh, 16.2 millimeters diameter so you can figure the approximate gear ratio there from from all that all it'll take you is a little math and uh, but I was surprised with the extra this is already geared down it's got reduction gears in here which is why you have such a slow turning and then I have added to the gearing down uh, there so that made it a lot more powerful than it would have been. And I, I really like this little controller I got from, uh, from eBay. It's a little Chinese job. Let's see. Okay. It's got forward and reverse with this switch here. And it's got uh, speed control with that switch there. You just run the juice in one end, run it out the other. The little controller in the box there does all the... Uh, work for you. And as I understand, supposedly this will run a stepper motor just exactly the way it's running this windshield wiper motor. So it may be that uh, that's a good way to control a stepper, if, you know, a cheap way if you just want to use it for for something besides running machinery. All right, well, that's the end of our test and uh, the end of the playing around. I couldn't find my bathroom scale, so I couldn't actually weigh the stuff just right. But I think that bucket of weights, I'm pretty sure it's 80 or 
more pounds, maybe 90. There's a lot of lot of weight there. When I went to pick it up, it didn't feel like 70 pounds. And it's really stressing the heck out of the bucket. So, all right. Anyway, thanks for viewing. Uh, Y'all uh, click the subscribe button if you're not subscribers already. And just in general, keep on keeping on. Bye. Daisy. Did you see did you see Howie when he was on vacation? Huh? Did you see Howie when he was on vacation? You did? What do you think? Did you think you ought to have a vacation? Huh? You do? Where would you want to go? You want to go to the beach? Huh? You, no? You want to go to the park? Yeah, and chase squirrels? Squirrels is what you want? Oh, yeah. Would you eat them up? Huh? Oh, you would. And you, you run all the squirrels out here, you heard, don't you? Yes, you do. Right. Yes, well, that's a good girl. Okay, thank you.